Matrix by Lauren Groff. Have you heard about this book yet? I discovered it while scrolling through the book reviews in the Washington Post and the New York Times. A book about 12th century nuns in a decrepit abbey in England? That would not particularly interest me, but reviewers convinced me to try it. Anyway, I was looking for a change of pace from my usual reading genres. I checked out the author, Lauren Groff, who is in her early 40s and found she is the author of six books. Her work has won over six different literature awards and prizes and was shortlisted for the National Book Critics Circle Prize. She has received fellowships from the Guggenheim Foundation and the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study and was named one of Granta's best young American novelists. Her work has been translated into over 30 languages. That's impressive. So, I borrowed the book from my library and stacked it on my nightstand. Close your eyes. Do it. Close your eyes and listen. She rides out of the forest alone, 17 years old, in the cold March drizzle. Maria, who comes from France. What an excellent opening sentence. This girl, Maria, has just been expelled from the court of her cousin Eleanor of Aquitaine and sent to a crumbling Benedictine abbey in backwoods England. She is sent there to become the prioress because she can read and write and can run an estate. The year is 1158. Matrix delves deep into the mist and mysticism of medieval England and France, but also into solving pig farming problems, dealing with heartbreaking diseases and plague, unraveling mundane account books, maneuvering in local and international politics like the schemes of the Plantagenets, countering a repressive culture, the rapture of religious visions and memories of participating in the Crusades, and maintaining community in the face of papal interdictions and most certainly the importance of women in the history of Christianity. As Maria ages, she changes this decaying abbey and its maybe 20 despairing inhabitants into a flourishing community of nearly 200 women with multiple buildings, bountiful fields and farms, and safety for those living there. I became mesmerized by the story of Marie, her abbey, and her struggles, both defeats and victories. Details of life, some absolutely horrific, others absolutely transcendent, all mixed together as days and years go by. The staggering work of both historical scholarship and brilliant imagination to say nothing of the seemingly simple but luscious writing style. A book page publication reviewer noted, Graf has created a labyrinth of jeweled moments in this novel. This is a novel about leadership, ambition, and enterprise, and about the communal life of individuals and overcoming tremendous obstacles in a backward society that is lost to us in time. I said earlier that this book is not something that I would normally pick up to read, but it has opened my eyes that maybe I'm a bit narrow in my reading selections. I loved it and wildly recommend you read it also. If it's not something that you think appeals to you, get it anyway and maybe your mind and your imagination will be broadened too. My name is Mike, and I'm a librarian specialist at the West Regional Library.